All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. We may have folks join us late. Um, welcome to the John Carroll Parent Panel and Reception, virtual as it is. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. My name is Stephanie Levinson. I'm Vice President for Enrollment at John Carroll. Um, I've been at John Carroll just under two years. Um, joining uh, John Carroll after being in college admissions my entire professional career, almost 25 years, um, having graduated um, from a Big Ten school as well as um, a fellow Jesuit school um, and enjoyed the experience so much um, and started my career at a Jesuit school. Um, it was a pleasure to come to John Carroll um, and return to a, a small private school um, and all that it has to offer. And we are thrilled to have you here today. Um, we were so disappointed not to have you on campus, um, but we have made the best lemonade possible out of the coronavirus lemons, as I like to say. Um, so we um, want to take about 45 minutes um, today to um, have some of our parents of current John Carroll students speak with you. We also have a couple um, John Carroll um, staff members here with us today. Um, and then we're going to just go through some kind of housekeeping items at the end, hopefully leave on a high note. Um, we're going to use the chat function um, to ask questions if everybody sees that at the bottom. I would ask um, if you are comfortable, you could leave your email address with your question just in case for some reason we are not able to get to it or if it's a question um, that um, you would prefer we not answer as a parent. Um, if you do see in the chat function, you can ask a question of any of the participants. So if it's a question that you would prefer to ask um, to me as the host or to one of the panelists, um, you can do that. Um, and we will be able to get that information after the, the um, panel is over. So I want to start with introductions. Um, I'm going to um, ask our John Carroll staff to start that's with us today. Um, so I'm going to ask Dr. Mark McCarthy to begin with us. Hello, everybody. It's great to have you here. Um, I can tell you that I am very near campus and it's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, we had a little snow and it's gone. Um, so we really do miss you here, but we're happy that you're joining us this afternoon. I'm uh, again, Mark McCarthy. I'm the Vice President of Student Affairs. I've been at John Carroll for, this is my 12th year actually, and uh, hopefully I can help answer any questions you might have about um, student life or um, our involvement with students across campus. Uh, residence halls, athletics, whatever that might be. Uh, hopefully I can support and help you in those uh, answers. Thanks, Mark. Melissa, can you uh, introduce yourself, please, Wensler? Sure, I'm happy to. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to see all of your faces. A lot of you I recognize from working with you through this process. My name is Melissa Wensler. I'm one of the assistant directors of enrollment at John Carroll. Um, I am a very proud double alum of JCU, getting both my undergraduate degree in education and then getting my master's in nonprofit administration. So, um, you know, I have a perspective of not only having college age children myself and going through this process with them, um, but also very intimately familiar with John Carroll and all that it has to offer and the value of an education. So I'm so excited to see everybody and um, looking forward to a nice chat today. So thanks for being with us. Thanks, Melissa. Um, now we're going to ask our um, uh, John Carroll parents that have graciously given us their time today um, to introduce themselves. Um, I'm going to start with the Riley family who is here uh, joining us today from Cincinnati. So um, if I could ask the Rileys to um, introduce yourself, um, your children uh, that have attended John Carroll, um, talk about your current uh, daughter who's at John Carroll, um, just what she's studying and maybe just one activity um, that she's involved in um, just for the sake of time. Um, and uh, we'll go through all the panelists and then we'll get right to questions. Okay, so take it away, Riley's. Uh, Kevin and Kathy Riley, hi everybody. Um, our current senior is Maureen, uh, class of 20, but she follows uh, two older siblings that have graduated from John Carroll, our oldest daughter, Colleen, graduated in 2015, uh, went on to UC Law School and is a practicing attorney in Ohio right now. Um, Brendan uh, was a graduate of 2018, uh, did ROTC while studying uh, international 
uh, business in Mandarin and was in the Army ROTC and is a first lieutenant now in the Army uh, in Fort Hood, Texas. Um, so Maureen is our third uh, blue streak, um, sadly finishing her <clears throat> senior year at home, but uh, making the best of it. She is a classical studies major, uh, pre-health uh, and humanities with a minor in chemistry. Um, has done many activities. Um, I guess one of her bigger, more consistent ones has been as a uh, tour guide um, and uh, uh, Blue Streak ambassador, uh, welcoming prospective students. Um, and I think the other thing that's big in her is, I know you said yeah. one, but the Man Racer Retreat has uh, been a big part of her career there as well uh, in terms of the spirituality at the school. So uh, we've been pleased with uh, two grads and one senior uh, all took kind of different paths through the school in terms of their academics and their uh, extracurriculars, but uh, has a place that has a lot to offer for everyone. And uh, for us, kind of right size, right spirit, strong academics and all good. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm next going to call on the Rogers family, uh, who I believe is, uh, I don't know if you're in Toledo or near Toledo, Ohio, um, but they also have two children that currently attend John Carroll. So I'll let you take it away. We do. Thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Damian Rogers, and this is my wife, Noelle. Uh, we have two children at John Carroll. One is a junior, our daughter, Sophie, um, and our son, Sam, is a freshman. Um, both are exercise science majors on a pre-health track. Um, Sophie uh, also has a minor in peace, justice, and human rights. Um, Sophie's an Arupe scholar and Sam is a leadership scholar. Uh, Sam's also uh, plays lacrosse. Uh, Sophie's very involved in the admissions department uh, and loves that as a tour guide and admissions liaison. Um, and Sam loves his experience uh, on the lacrosse team. Um, Jesuit education has been a long time part of our family. Um, we believe in it fundamentally um, and both of our children and our family have had a tremendous experience at, at John Carroll. All right, um, next on my list is the Turpak family who also have had several children at John Carroll. Um, and I'll let them uh, talk about them. And I will point out that uh, if you were able to watch um, one of the welcome videos uh, today on the Celebration website, their daughter Molly is uh, one of the featured speakers and she did a wonderful job. So Turpax, take it away. Thank, Thank you. you. So this is uh, my husband, Stephen, and I'm Mary Beth Turpak. Uh, we both graduated from John Carroll in 1991. Uh, three of our children have attended John Carroll, our oldest, Maria, graduated last year, and um, we have two daughters there now. Uh, Claire is a senior, and Molly's a freshman. So Claire um, is an Arupe scholar. Um, she's also been very involved with the um, spirituality at John Carroll. She was, she was supposed to be a Manresa uh, retreat leader this, this spring, um, and um, she is a tour guide. She was the orientation um, staff member for three years and the senior leader last year. Um, she's in a um, Chi Omega for sorority, and she is a management human resources um, major and a minor in entrepreneurship. Our freshman, Molly, um, is majoring in psychology and looking into minoring in public health and biology. She is also in Chi Omega sorority. She's also very involved in the um, uh, spiritual life at John Carroll. Very, very happy there. She is the student liaison, so she drives the vans for the um, Center for Service and Social Action. She drives to the, um, the different sites, so she's enjoying that. And she's in the sailing club and um, intramural sports and living on campus. We live in Rocky River, Ohio, so we're about 45 minutes from John Carroll. All three of our daughters have lived on campus and um, they just have loved the experience. My husband went to a Jesuit high school in town and it's just been a fantastic experience for them. They're, they both came from um, all girls Catholic high schools. All right, um, I am gonna ask, are the Brown family from Pittsburgh still on? I think they kind of disappeared. I don't know if they somehow jumped off because they 
I think we might have lost them. So I'm going to pay attention and we'll pick them back up um, to introduce themselves. But I will go to the Hyde family uh, coming to us from Virginia today. And I'm, I think I need, can you unmute yourself? Okay, great. It, done. Okay. Just did. Thank you. We're sort of the anomaly here because Catherine is our first uh, student at John Carroll. Although we, uh, she's been in Catholic education since pre-K, um, we found that uh, uh, the Jesuit school and, and the environment at John Carroll has been absolutely wonderful for, for, for her. She fell in love with the campus the moment she walked on, uh, on, the, on the campus tour. And she said, I can really see myself going here. We actually had to, no, I actually had to almost force her to apply to other schools. Um, and when, she, when all of the six schools she applied to accepted her, um, she pretended to, to consider the others, but JCU was, was her, her choice all along and we knew it. Um, it's, the school has been absolutely marvelous for her and it's been a joy watching her grow and learn and really broaden her horizons. And she currently works on campus as a caller for the admissions call center. Some of you may have, or some of your, your prospective students may have talked to her. And one of the highlights of her year for the past uh, two or three years has been participating in the Ignatian Family Teach-In for Justice, which uh, actually comes and does a conference down in our neighborhood, down in Northern Virginia. And Again, it's it's a fantastic opportunity for her to learn more and and expand her very caring and empathetic heart. Excellent. Well, uh, the Browns switched from their their phone to a laptop, so I will. Uh, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. Um, so I will ask them. I believe I unmuted you. So uh, Gina and Will, are you uh, available to introduce yourselves? Yeah, it's Jean and Tom. Oh, Tom, um, sorry. That's okay. Right. That's okay. <laughs> wrong, wrong. Oh. Dad. <laughs> That's quite all right. Our son, Luke Brown, is a sophomore at John Carroll. He, uh, we come from a family. We have four boys who were very sports oriented. Um, always tried to lead them more into leadership and giving back. However, Luke really evolved into that with John Carroll. I can't say enough about how. Um, the university and the people, obviously it's the people, but not the university, have really led him to just be a, a better leader. And he's involved, he was involved with the Immersion Project. He is a football player. Um, he leads an organization to build um, deeper faith with all, uh, with all athletes. Um, so he is just thrilled to be there. He is a he speaks accolades of John Carroll and anybody that comes in, he wants to, he wants to meet, he wants to welcome, and he wants to make sure that they feel very comfortable there. So we can't say enough about the university. Thank you. Um, I'd like to um, do a very informal poll and hopefully this will work right. Um, uh, for those of you that know where the reaction button is, um, uh, uh, I know we might have some legacy families uh, on the, um, uh, on the call. So if you're a legacy family to John Carroll, if you could just throw up a, a wave or a thumbs up, I'd love to flip through the screens real quick and see how many we have. Um, so it would be great to know that. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you. That's great. Um, thank you for for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Just thought I'd I'd uh, ask that question. So, oh great, thank you so much. Um, I wanna ask one more, we have one more um, uh, uh, family that I just wanna double check and see if the Taylor family from Michigan has been able to join us yet. Um, if you are, can you um, uh, chat me and let me know so we can have you introduce yourself. I haven't, there's a lot of participants so it's hard to check the list right now. Um, perhaps if they join us late, we'll have them, um, we'll have them introduce yourselves once they get here. So um, I um, have some starter questions, um, but I'm happy to take questions now um, to direct to our panelists. Um, so if you want to use the chat function, um, you can either um, message myself or Melissa, or if you're comfortable, you can just message the entire group. It's whatever you're comfortable with. 
Um, if you'd like to ask a question of the panelists, um, I'm happy to get us started maybe with a couple questions um, to get everybody thinking um, and we can take things from there. Um, and so, yes, can we talk about the COVID-19 contingency plans? <laughs> I figured that might be the way to get us uh, started off. Um, and so I think I'm gonna let Dr. McCarthy maybe talk about that um, to get us started if you're okay discussing that, Mark, um, just because you've been such an integral part of that. Sure, thank you. Um, yes, well, it's been an interesting uh, ride for all of us, I think. Uh, so I have the, the pleasure of uh, co-chairing our COVID-19 task force, which actually began meeting, oh, I'd say uh, about March 6th, uh, when we had a big decision to make to get our students who are in Europe uh, back to uh, the United States and kind of facilitating all that. And one thing led to the, to the next. And before we knew it, we were uh, helping 1,400 students uh, move back uh, to their to to your houses and and their parents' houses or their their permanent residences, uh, and so we've been in that process um, and we pivoted very quickly to being able to to offer our courses online, uh, and our faculty have been tremendous at at uh, building their learning skills too and and learning actually from uh, our students uh, in some cases who are are quite good at uh, at all of this sort of technology and. Uh, really, we've learned a lot from them. So uh, we're in the process right now of finishing out this semester. Uh, we have, uh, we're hoping to, um, well, we will, we will be following the guidelines that are put forward by, by our governor and the State Department and the CDC and our Cuyahoga County Health Department uh, in, in the process of, um, of recovery, I guess I would say, and, and our next steps to move back in. So we are, are following those guidelines. Uh, our next task, after, besides finals for students and getting their courses done, uh, will be to help facilitate uh, all the students who left pretty quickly. Most of them left belongings here on campus. And so we need to facilitate, uh, some of the parents who've got students here know that, we need to facilitate a, a safe way for them to, to return their, their items home and go through the summer. So this summer, we're continuing online uh, with all of our coursework. Uh, and we are really working through a number of scenarios right now to be able to be prepared to offer the John Carroll education in the best way we can. And our hope is that we will have that in person and back on campus with the academic schedule that we have planned right now. Uh, but we know that we have to, while we're doing that, we also need to plan uh, to, to, be, to offer our coursework and other experiences as best we can uh, through the virtual and online environment. Um, and so we're, we're in the same place that I think most schools are right now, um, but we're very positive that, uh, and hopeful that we'll be able to offer the full experience uh, as we approach August and come back to campus. And then from there, we'll work out all the plans and follow the guidelines in terms of, of how we will do that. Um, and uh, we'll do that together. So if that helps. Thanks, Mark. And I just want to add, um, we do have plans to send out weekly newsletters starting at the beginning of June to both incoming students and parents um, to keep you updated um, as things evolve. Um, we'll make sure that you're um, uh, oh, probably over communicated with um, in terms of what those plans look like so that you feel very um, confident and comfortable with where things are heading um, and how we can support you and your students. Um, so if you've been regularly receiving emails from the Office of Admission, um, you will continue to do so. Um, if you say, hmm, I haven't gotten anything, um, I, that means we probably um, don't have a correct email address for you. And so um, you certainly um, can send that to me um, and we'll do some of those kind of housekeeping items at the end as well. Um, but we do plan on keeping up our communications over the summer um, to make sure you know what's going on. So. Um, we do have some questions, it looks like, uh, coming in. Um, and so um, I want to um, address, there was a question about um, what happens to students who may not um, be um, as set on their major and what kind of support is there. And if I recall from our conversation I had with the parents on Thursday night, I believe, um, was it Luke that had um, uh, some uh, uh, negotiation and navigation getting to his major. Um, Browns, would you like to maybe comment a, a little bit about what that was like for him? So Luke started out thinking he wanted to be biology. Um, and then, 
quickly, he decided to not go that route. And then he entered business. And once he entered you know business, you're acting like an imbecile. He, um, <laughs> he um, decided to specify a little bit more into what is it, supply chain management and entrepreneurship. He, what he has told us is he has talked to a lot of different professors who has given him guidance. Um, and it has not, um, in any way, it hasn't uh, stopped him in his process as far as graduating later. So being that that first year, there's so many gen ed courses, it, w it really worked well for him. So, so far it's been great with the switching of majors. Thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions coming in about orientation um, and just overall what that looks like in terms of planning. So um, Mark, would you maybe go ahead and comment about that for this summer? I think that's probably a big topic on everyone's mind right now. Absolutely. So um, just as I have referred to earlier, we, uh, we would love to have, have all of the orientations on, on campus this summer, but we're, uh, we're pretty confident that, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of um, things that would need to change for that to happen. But we're, we're planning actually uh, fully to engage our orientation sessions online. Uh, and we want to keep the same dates that we have. The format may be a slightly different uh, in terms of timing and things, but we, we decided that we have a lot of people have already signed up for orientation rather than trying to reschedule them or push them later in the summer with uncertainties that are out there. We're going to keep the dates that we have. Uh, and to use um, the best way we can, uh, we have a number of student leaders who will be part of that to help run that program as we always do. Uh, and, uh, but we, my sense, in all honesty, if I was a betting person, I would say most likely these are gonna be uh, online and virtual experiences. Um, but we hope to actually maintain uh, a number of programs even through July and into August uh, to share information again with you throughout the summer to, to, as, as questions and the time gets closer to arrival on campus so that we're, we can prepare um, the students and the parents uh, for, for the ex full experience of being on campus. Thanks, Mark. Um, I see that there's some questions coming in about just negotiating, maybe getting home uh, and, you know, do students carpool, um, you know, if there's any um, transportation um, to the airport. I don't know if um, Catherine, maybe from Virginia, takes, uh, if, if she drives home or takes the, um, uh, if she flies at all, um, if, if you have any comments about how she might do that or if perhaps um, the Rileys or the Rogers um, talk about how their daughters uh, or your son um, gets home, um, if, if they carpool with friends or figure out how to, how to negotiate getting home, if one of you wants to comment on that. Well, for us, Catherine cheats because she's got an aunt and uncle who work quite close to the JCU campus, as Mary's from Cleveland. Um, so, but, but Mary was telling me that, that, there, that there was something to do with the airport. I think that um, you can get, I don't remember what I heard four year, three years ago when we went to orientation, there was something about a shuttle that can take students to the airport. But Catherine, my brother lives so, works so close, she goes and spends the night and then they take her to the airport because they live right like five miles from the airport. Um, grew up five miles from the airport. <laughs> <laughs> All those airplanes over your head. Um, but the, when I, I guess I'm, I'm also thinking about when I was in college, there was a board that, that used to have in our student union where you would put notes going home to Cleveland, um, need a ride, and you'd form carpools. But I don't, and I think I remember on the tour that there was something like that at John Carroll too. I just can't remember it. You know, you forget those things when you have your, when you cheat and you have a brother that lives in Cleveland. <laughs> Roger? From Toledo. Oh. Sure, from Toledo, which is about oh, two hours and 15 minutes from, from campus. Um, there are a handful of folks from Toledo, lots of carpooling going on. Um, amongst parents and amongst students. So honestly, it's been very easy. Yeah, and I, I think the students uh, figure out how to, to, to find each other as well. And they probably have lots more of 
technological means that we don't even understand uh, to be able to do so. Mark, did you have something to add? Just real quick, uh, um, the, someone mentioned shuttles to the airport. Actually, uh, that was a program we, we had and tried in the past, but uh, quite frankly, the uh, RTA uh, that gets you, that can, you can take all the way to the airport is really less than a mile and even probably a half a mile, a couple blocks from campus to jump on there and you can go the whole way to the airport. So that's, that's probably the quickest and easiest way to get there. I was going to mention that, uh, you know, we live on the west side of Cleveland and the rapid is right down Belvoir and our kids um, would go down and take the rapid and we'd pick them up here on the west side. So, um, and it'll take you right out to the airport as well. So it's, you know, very transportation. Thanks. Um, there was a question about um, all the sessions that we um, uh, are doing today live with the exception of the student session that is going on right now. We're not recording that session for lots of reasons, um, but this session along with the um, academic sessions, the residence life session, the commuter session um, are all being recorded. Um, we're hoping to get those posted next week. We also did a series of webinars um, the past three Wednesday nights on a, a variety of topics. Um, those are all going to be posted as well. Um, once those uh, recordings have all been um, posted and added, we will um, message everyone via email so that you can go back and watch anything additional that you weren't able to um, attend so that you can get some additional information. Um, so I just wanted everybody to be aware of that. Um, there was a question that came up about safety and how um, for the, the current John Carroll parents, um, how your son or daughter feels um, about being on campus and, and if they feel um, safe. So if you wanna speak to that experience, um, if, if for the current parents, if you wanna just hit the reaction button, um, I'll know who might wanna speak to that. Um, Brown family, are you trying to hit the reaction button? I see you there. I'll, you want to go ahead and do you have anything to add there? Mark, do you want to talk about, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ms. Do you Brown. want me to speak about the safety? Yeah, do you okay. have anything? You I, want to well, first of all, I, I know, I shouldn't say this maybe gender wise, but I think p parents of females are a little more concerned than parents of males. I have a male, but um, when I'm there, I always see a uh, police presence. Um, from what I've gathered from Luke, our son, it's very safe. Um, I've never, in all the games that we've been to, I've never seen, you know, you, I've been to, we have three children at universities and I've been to universities where I see fights break out and that sort of thing. And I've never, in all the times we've been up there, seen anything like that. So in my view, it's a very, very safe community. So. Hey, Stephanie, I just want to add as somebody that actually lives in University Heights and I literally can see the baseball field from the window right that I'm facing. Um, you know, I live in the community and not only are we, um, we have the JCU campus police, but we also have the University Heights uh, police force. So it is a very safe neighborhood. We have a lot of eyes on our campus and on our community. Um, we also are being in the neighborhood, so there's a lot of young families that live in University Heights. Um, so it's just a really great area. It is very safe, and we're very fortunate that we have a lot of eyes looking out for all of us, not only for the safety of the community, but for our John Carroll community as well. Thank you. Um, if we could go back to the Brown family for a second. Um, your son, Luke, attended a public high school. Um, and I think the other families, um, the, 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 their students attended private high schools. Um, there was a question about um, you know, what it was like uh, coming to John Carroll. And I should preface this by saying, um, you know, John Carroll, yes, we are a private university. Um, about 40% of our students come from private high schools, but about 60% of our students come from public high schools. Um, so there might be a little bit of just perception out there um, of, of what our makeup of our student body is. Um, but, you know, if you could comment a little bit about if, if, if Luke, um, uh, you know, in terms of his own transition coming to school, coming from a public high school, suddenly where maybe um, some of his friends on the football team or just his friends on, you know, from his residence hall or from private high schools. Do you have anything to 
add uh, about that experience. Um, if there was any transition there, don't forget to unmute yourself. So. Okay, I would just, and for him, it was just such an easy transition. It, he has lots of friends from different cities. Um, he, as far as him being a student athlete, he said from the moment that he had the overnight visit, that's when it clinched it that he wanted to go there. It was because of the, um, the bond that he saw with kids and the support they were giving each other. So he was lucky in that when he went there, he, he was part of a team and the friendships were easy um, because of the way they go about the program and they speak so highly of men of Carol and men of character. And so it was a very easy transition for him. And it's nice to see him have a lot of different friends from a lot of different backgrounds. So. Thank you. Um, uh, there was a question about meal plans and just maybe what is the right one um, to, to go with. Um, I can um, maybe ask um, uh, maybe the, the Turpax or the Rogers, since you have younger students as well as older students, um, maybe to comment a moment about that. And then Mark, maybe you could uh, finish up perhaps with your own thoughts on that, so. Um, you know, our kids always did the 14 meal plan, um, which is like the, it's the two meals okay. um, a day. And we just found that um, it, it just gets them in more of a routine with getting used to going into the cafeteria and getting their meals um, set up for the day. And that was the mo that was the best for them. Um, okay, so. Yeah, and I think the same for, for, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say the in-between where they have uh, their extra bucks that they can spend there. And that's obviously a quick uh, meal if they don't feel like going into the cafeteria. And uh, from when we've been there, they have a lot of other options, even in the uh, main building. Uh, there's an Einstein's, I believe, where they get their coffee yeah. and so Starbucks. And so uh, a lot of options. For our children, um... Sophie was on the 14 meal plan too, and that worked out just great for her. But for Sam, um, as an athlete, he has needed more. And so um, we've been able to transition um, very easily and add dining dollars on as he, as he needs them. Um, so we feel like it's, it's worked out just fine, um, but it was a little bit of a, more of a learning curve with him being an athlete and and just needing more food thanks i was going to say oh, go i was going to say i was going to say also um the kids would use the shuttle and they would go down to target and uh the different stores and close by and get some extra you snacks, know fruit or snacks and so forth so there's always an option for them to uh get off campus with the campus transportation um and get some items that they may need Stephanie, do you want me to jump yeah, in here? Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Uh, yeah, I, a couple of good things, uh, exciting things, actually. So we have uh, made the decision to transition to a new food service um, after a number of years. And uh, we're very, very excited about that partnership. I, I can't uh, quite say who they are right now because uh, we're, we're finalizing the contract with them. Uh, but we're looking forward to a lot of new opportunities uh, in our food options, um, particularly focusing on on uh, all sorts of um, allergen-free foods, uh, gluten-free, uh, vegan and vegetarian options, as well as uh, trying to meet the needs of individually of the students that we have. And it's very diverse in that regard. So we're very excited about that. The other thing I'm excited to let you know about is that uh, because if your sons and daughters, I think, have registered to participate in this event, um, we have uh, decided that we're going to allow for an upgrade uh, from uh, the meal service, the 14 meal plan and some of the other ones we have to an unlimited plan uh, at, at no additional cost 
cost uh, to you as parents or for them to be paying. Uh, we, partly because we really want to utilize the dining facility um, fully throughout the day and into the evening hours. Uh, so we don't want to put a limit on the number of times so students can come in, get a cup of coffee, they can have a lunch there, they can have a, a breakfast. So it's an extra added option that we've added in this year uh, for those of you that have participated. And I guess I should say, and deposited uh, to, to come to John Carroll. So we're hoping you help make that decision and that that will be an added attraction. And, and we look forward to a real new food service that's gonna have lots of options for, for all of our students. Thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, see if um, we have our vice president for uh, uh, mission and identity uh, with us. Uh, I just messaged him. I don't know if he's, um, Ed, are you available to take a question? Um, sure. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Ed. I'm going to make you a co-host real quick. Um, so there was a question about just support for students that, um, you know, certainly John Carroll, um, we are a Catholic Jesuit university, about 40% or about half of our students identify as, as Catholic, um, but we, um, uh, you know, and, and there perhaps are more that just don't mark it on their application for admission. Um, but um, there's questions about what we do to support students um, uh, that are not Catholic, uh, that are uh, perhaps not of uh, a Christian Catholic faith. Um, and if you could speak to that for a moment, I'd, I'd love to have you do that. So thank you. Sure, I'm happy to. And I was actually just responding to one of the, the uh, families who were asking the question privately, but happy to share the answer with all. As a Jesuit Catholic school, um, we distinctly, we make a very uh, bold claim that we welcome people of all faiths and no particular faith, because we believe that as a Catholic university, we're supposed to prepare our students to be able to live in a world that is multicultural, that where there are many different faiths and people with no particular faith. So we want our educational environment to reflect the world that our students are going to be going into. And we want our students to have the uh, ability to talk about their own faith or worldview or political, I mean, their uh, philosophical perspective and to engage with other people so that they can learn from them. So our faculty are very well equipped to hold conversations um, in which they welcome different points of view and try to engage people um, so that they can contribute their insights and their perspectives. Um, we have a campus ministry center that uh, caters to any student that wants to come to them. And we have uh, reflection groups and retreat opportunities and immersion trips that welcomes people of all faiths and no faith. Um, we also, in the uh, Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion, we have a Muslim Student Association. We have a Hillel group. We have um, a, a Latinx uh, group. So uh, we really try to get find opportunities for our students to be together and to discuss and learn from one another um, because we believe that that's the distinct contribution we can make as a Jesuit university. Does that help? Yes, thank, thank you, Ed. Um, we would have Mark add anything? Oh, sorry. Oh, Mark, you're muted. No. No, I think you've got that right. <laughs> so thanks, Ed. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Ed. Um, I'd like to ask maybe the Riley family to address, um, uh, perhaps, you know, there might be some families that are unfamiliar with Jesuit education, although I, I'm yeah. assuming there's probably quite a few families that might be. Um, if, if you could comment about maybe um, what has been, um, you think, the impact of a Jesuit education on your children um, and perhaps why it's meaningful um, for their experience. I'd love to hear maybe from your perspective on that. Uh, sure, full, full disclosure is uh, we're biased. Um, our boys in town went to Jesuit high school. Uh, girls went to a summer school that was not Jesuit, but, um, and I'm a product of uh, St. Xavier High School and Holy Cross in Massachusetts. So uh, there is a bias. Our two children who have not gone to John Carroll uh, one has graduated from St. Louis, which is Jesuit, and one is a sophomore at Loyola in Chicago, which is also Jesuit. So uh, we're rampant with it. Um, and, and part of that for us as Catholic Christians is religious, but a big part of it is just the educational feel. Uh, it's always been more than just religion. Um, their academic philosophy, uh, the emphasis on social justice and 
and taking your education out into the world um, in a lot of platforms, your career certainly, but your life in general. And I mean, I can say with pretty good confidence, you know, we've seen that from all the schools and, and certainly from John Carroll as well. Um, I mean, the attorney daughter, the oldest, um, you know, was heavily involved in the Ohio Innocence Project, uh, which looked good on the lawyer resume, but I think a lot of that she felt pretty strongly about when it came to justice. Um, and it was certainly a big memory for her. I think those seeds were, were planted at John Carroll and um, they actually freed a guy from Cleveland, um, really from the neighborhood that had been in jail for 18 years for a murder he didn't commit. And she was heavily involved. Anyway, so it carries over to life. And uh, I think that uh, John Carroll is certainly true to the mission. Thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions about um, what student health care is like on campus. So I think what I'd like to do is maybe have Mark address it initially and then see if any of the parent panelists could maybe speak to it from the service experience, from your own children's experience, if they've had to use um, student health care um, while they're on campus. So Mark, could you get us started with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, we, so we do have a health, uh, health and wellness center on campus uh, that it, the director of the health center is uh, an RN. We have several nurses who are who also uh, are there uh, part time, but we also have a, a very uh, close relationship with the Cleveland Clinic. And so our um, docs actually are there two days a week uh, and they offer by appointment. Uh, are the doctors, are doctors from Cleveland Clinic, uh, an internal medicine practice. Uh, and so we are able to, to manage that, I think, really, really well. Uh, we also know that there are situations sometimes that arise when the docs aren't there or, uh, or a student who needs a particular um, um, treatment that isn't available in our health center. We have a, a van actually uh, with our health center. We will uh, take students to appointments that they need to get to off campus at our number of doctors. And so one of the things about those of you that are, are, are out of town um, is that, you know, one of the things that we are very blessed with in Cleveland is an incredible healthcare system. Uh, and so every, every possible uh, need that one could have is here. Uh, and so that, that's the process that we utilize. Um, and uh, I guess that's the best thing I can say for right now. So in addition to that, we also do a lot of wellness oriented things to try to not just respond to the, to the case that emerges of the illness or the sickness, but also try to help our students be uh, as physically, mentally, and uh, socially well as possible. Uh, so we really uh, utilize a number of programmatic efforts um, in our recreation center and our wellness center to uh, really support students in their overall well being. Mary, go ahead. Um, I was just going to comment with the um, with with the health services and the transportation. Um, our oldest daughter had appointments that she needed to go to um, for, to UH, and so it was within it's within a certain mileage. But she was able to take the van. She just set it up in advance, and they would drive her to her appointments when she was a freshman and before having a car on campus. And then we have another friend that's there this year, their daughter, and she has like monthly appointments, and she was able to set that up successfully too to for transportation to her appointments. So that was really a, a big benefit. Great, do any of the other um, John Carroll parents have anything to add? Hi, family, go ahead. You were oh. muted. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're muted. Well, now try. Kate is accident prone <laughs> and she has used the, uh, the health center on campus. Um, you heard her ankle and hobbled around on crutches as the case may be, but a more, Mark mentioned the uh, close tie-in with the Cleveland Clinic, which is probably one of the top hospitals in the country. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it's huge and it's immensely capable and it's close. Kate has been going there for uh, to an endocrinologist there. Um, she chose well. The woman's incredible. Um, and that has helped her, um, helped her health quite a bit. Um, it, it helped improve it. And the university has provided rides and so forth on, on for that and and we're very grateful um but it's not just that it's she's also very prone to anxiety and occasional depression and the counseling center on campus has been huge she has gone regularly and they have given her immense and immense support and i am um extremely grateful for for that support and it's 
They've given her coping, coping mechanisms. They've been available to talk to her oh, every couple of weeks or whenever she, she feels the need. And she's been so open about it that, it, that it's incredible to watch. Again, it's, it's a growth experience for her, but it's also um, fantastic to see that the university supports that in particular. Um, over to you. Great, thanks. Um, just one question I think that I know Mark can answer um, about um, music opportunities on campus. If you could address that, I don't know if any of the parent, uh, the, the John Carroll parents, if any of your kids are involved in music. I don't think we talked about that uh, on Thursday uh, evening, but Mark, I know you can probably address that and then we're gonna um, probably wrap things up with one final thought and then wrap up with our housekeeping. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, some of my favorite groups on campus are the music groups. So uh, I was very involved in music at, uh, at college when I was there, and I, and I love our, the programs that we have. So we have a variety of things, um, actually. Um, I know someone, someone's uh, son plays the trombone, and we need him. Uh, because we have a great pep band uh, that uh, participates with uh, at our at our both our football games and our basketball games, and they're in, they're incredibly helpful for uh, keeping the spirit high on those games. There's also a jazz ensemble uh, that uh, trombonists could participate in or other instruments. Uh, we have a wind ensemble as well, uh, and so we would keep expanding these programs. Vocally, we have uh, a um, what's called SCOLA, which is a co-ed uh, group of pretty talented uh, vocalists. We also have a liturgical uh, choir that is ever growing and supports our ministries in really wonderful ways. Uh, in addition to those programs, um, we've had a number of acapella groups that have emerged, uh, both a male acapella group, actually Ed has helped coach them, uh, a women's acapella group and a co-ed acapella group. Uh, someone else, oh, um, we don't currently have an orchestra. But we also have a number of fine arts courses that uh, one of the most popular one is the guitar class, which is terrific. Uh, and so one of the core requirements is a one credit uh, music, uh, well, fine arts course and music is one option. Uh, studio art and some of the art courses are also there. But uh, so yeah, we're always excited about uh, having our, our music people on campus and they add a lot to the experience. Thanks, Mark. Um, knowing that we're kind of running a little bit um, uh, late, I just maybe ask the panelists um, if they have any final piece of advice um, as uh, this group of parents is uh, going through the final decision-making process, knowing some of them, their, their children have already decided to enroll at John Carroll. Um, some of them are still in that decision-making process. Um, if you had to give uh, any piece of advice uh, quickly what that might be um, if you know whoever wants to start will sounds like um, uh, maybe uh, folks have um, some little nug of it, nugget of advice I think the Turpex uh, with Molly definitely uh, she put you through the ringer from last year I know so maybe we'll ask you to start sure um, I guess with, with both of us both attending John Carroll and through our experiences um, you know, the kids have had a great, great experience there at John Carroll. Uh, they went through uh, grade school in our local public schools, and then they went to an all-girls Catholic school. Um, and it was just neat to see with the diverse group of kids that they met through the public schools and the things that they were involved in at that time, how it's built. And as parents, it's great to see the kids involved in all these different activities. And uh, I think that's one thing that John Carroll, it's a uh, all kinds of kids school. There's something for everyone. Um, the support staff has been great. You know, everybody doesn't learn, you know, the same way. So there's a lot of great uh, advice and the teachers um, and, and the staff. We've, we've had a great uh, experience there with the kids and uh, the, um, And even with, even with the present um, situation, it's been amazing with the, uh, this pandemic, the how close they still feel with their teachers, the professors, our daughter Claire had an end of the year celebration with her um, professors. Her, her professors, the, the two or three professors from the department, the 30 students that were in her major with the management and human resources. They had a great time. Um, Molly has had classes that have all of a sudden ended with a dance party or psychology class, you know, just to kind of keep them connected and check in with them. Campus ministry, even Claire's men race a group. But just to hear your child say, like, I feel so at home there. I'm so happy I decided to go here. And just to know, to hear them say that 
when you want to, them to discern for themselves where they want to be, even though you might see as a parent that what's the best spot for them, but for them to find it on their own to tell you that is just the best thing in the world, I think. Thank you. Uh, Riley family, do you have something to add? I, I just wanted to throw out, I mean, the, the home feel, uh, the family feel is important. I would say our oldest had a pretty clear idea that she was going there uh, early on. I would say our next two uh, were less certain uh, starting out and they both ended up uh, modifying major um, in terms of their path, but I think they both felt the support on campus to go there. They developed really good, strong friendships and uh, there was never regrets from um, either one of them because of the family feel. So there was some comfort level nudging them in that direction, yeah. even though they weren't certain. And comfort as parents sending them there that they would be taken care of because they're part of a family at John Carroll. It's a big enough school that they get exposed to a lot, but small enough for that uh, family feeling and stuff. So I appreciated that as a parent sending our kids there. Thank you. Um, any other of the panelists have anything they wanna add? Oh, Rogers, go ahead. Thank you. So uh, we have similar feelings about our children being there together. Um, we've actually seen them grow closer. A um, little rough at the beginning, but they found their way, and um, and now they're they're the best of friends. And now they're here at home together, working. They're actually in the same biology biology lab class, so they're doing lab together. Um, so that brought a lot of comfort to us to have them together, um, and it it does feel like home for them. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Heinz. Both of our mothers were high school teachers. And m one of my mom's favorite sayings is, when you're raising a child, you have to give them roots and wings. Sorry, I got choked up. Um, and we feel we did everything we could to give her the roots. And letting her go to John Carroll has We've watched the wings develop and spread, and she's really taken flight. He's the one that gets most emotional. He cried when we took our oldest school to school, and he cried when we took Kate. <laughs> I'm right there, but you know. um, but yeah. I think she's grown a lot, and John Carroll is a part of it. But it's also just being, just being at a school. It doesn't matter which school you go to. It's that freedom to learn, to fall flat on your face or to, and then get up and keep going. It's like riding a bike. You have to fall off in order to learn how to ride a bike. And we're there to pick her up, but she has to, they have to, she has to go on her own. I can say, Kat, you can do whatever you want, but you know, you can't, you gotta make mistakes in order to, to learn um, from, from those mistakes in order to grow up. And that we all needed to do that on our own. If you think oh, back nice. to when we were all young See, and going off to college, we all made some silly mistakes and they have to, too. they just got to be there. You got to love them because they're, they're, they're your children. You have to love them. And John Carroll is one of the best places you can send your kids to. It is a family. It's going, it's like, I love John Carroll, not just because it's in Cleveland, my hometown, but because of the Jesuit experience. My brothers went to Ignatius, two of my brothers went to Ignatius and they both succeeded well. And one of them went to one of those big 10 schools. Um, it wasn't a big 10 when he went there. It did after he started there. Um, so, but that was a long time ago. Um, but let's see. So, but it's just like, they, we've all grown and thank God for Catholic education and for John Carroll in my alma mater, which is also a Catholic school, the University of Dayton, I didn't grow because I went, because I didn't go, ah, what was I going to say? I grew because I went there. It was the only school I applied to. So, which is why we made Kate apply to six. Um, but you need to grow and they, and you need to let them go and, and get their own wings. You can support them. They got to let them out of the nest. They'll be good. So nurture the roots. Thank you. You're welcome. 
I'm a little teary myself. Gosh, I don't, no one cries alone in my presence. All right. The Brown family, do you have any final thoughts? And then we're going to wrap up uh, uh, with just some housekeeping items. Any final words of advice? Yes, I, th these are my words. Um, once you make a decision, please tell your child that no matter where you go, it's tough. Transition is tough. This, this will, our fourth one is going off to college and that first year, mental health issues come up. You're feeling sad, you're feeling isolated. I can't think of a better place to be than John Carroll and I really mean this. Um, when I go to other universities with our other kids, I just don't see the caliber of people that I do at John Carroll. Um, the, I just can't speak more highly of the camaraderie. So if your child is, is being challenged with some issues and things going on, reach out because there's a lot of people there that are willing to support. And to me, that means everything. It's, it's when your well-being is not there, it doesn't matter what all the learning, you just can't learn. So tell them to reach out because it's a very accommodating university and the people are what make it that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your uh, remarks that are clearly from the heart. So thank you for that. Um, I am going to share my screen and just go through some housekeeping items. Then we're gonna let Melissa um, share her screen. We're having some video challenges with my laptop. Um, uh, while I'm getting this up, um, I want, um, if you have any final questions that you want us to ask or to answer, you can drop those in the chat box, but please give us your email address along with your question. Um, that way um, we can follow up with you soon. Um, so while I've got everybody here, I just want to go through some of the housekeeping items for everybody. Um, so for those students um, that um, are making the decision to commit to John Carroll, you want to make sure that they pay that $300 enrollment deposit. It's on the JCU Gateway. It's actually at the um, bottom of the celebration webpage today. Um, that also allows them to check all of their enrollment steps, which are the um, following steps down below. Um, we talked about orientation today. Um, there are still spots available um, in all of the sessions. Um, we'd love to go ahead and get everybody that's um, already committed to John Carroll. Um, that is one of the next important steps that you do need to take. So if you can um, bug your children about, have you done this yet? Uh, I'm a mom of a high school freshman. Um, luckily, she's very on top of things, but that's still one of the jobs that I have. And I have twin boys that are eight, and I'm sure I will be more um, than I do her. But um, get signed up for that orientation date over the summer. Um, for those um, students that will be living on campus, they need to make sure to go ahead and get that housing application completed. Um, complete the student health record, um, which is done online. Um, we will need their final high school transcripts once um, graduation and everything is over. We completely understand this year that things may not go off completely as planned. Things may take a little longer to come in. That's fine. We definitely understand um, and put all of this situation into context. Um, if they have taken any college level coursework, we wanna make sure that we get those official transcripts as well. So don't forget to do that because without that, we can't award them any college level credit. Um, AP credit, same thing. We do need to get the AP scores directly from the college board. Um, I will also put in a plug for those of you that have children taking AP courses uh, this year and are taking the AP um, test in May from home, like my freshman. <laughs> um, we are taking the credit as we normally would this year. Thank you to the academic affairs side of the house at John Carroll. Um, we do not wanna add that level of stress to your children. So the same credit applies, uh, even though the test uh, experience is slightly different this year. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of this session that we are going to be um, giving out a weekly uh, newsletter just with updates starting in June. Um, we will over communicate this year. So, um, uh, just be aware of that, um, and we hope to be sharing very positive information. Um, 
And um, I will um, now, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, oh, I forgot, I've got the whole other side of the page, oh my goodness. So uh, uh, I'll make a little plug. Many of you are active in the parents of JCU class of 2024 uh, Facebook group. Uh, I often drop in there to answer questions uh, and comment, but if you'd like to join this group, please feel free. Um, there's a lot of great activity going on in there. Uh, really, it's your forum to ask questions, uh, and, and to talk, that's why we created it. Um, I will also make a shameless plug. We have a lot of great content going on uh, on social media channels, um, particularly on Twitter, um, where we've got alumni, faculty, staff, and students um, sharing um, why they chose John Carroll, what the experience has meant for them. So if you wanna look up the hashtags, uh, YJCU, JCU 2024 and transfer to JCU. Um, you can go down a Twitter rabbit hole pretty easily, um, watching some great videos um, and reading some great memories. I think it will probably only reinforce um, some of the information that was shared with you today um, in all the different sessions that you might have attended. Um, so if you get a chance, we'd love for you to check that out as well. Um, I'm gonna now stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna let Melissa share her screen. We wanted to end with a video. Um, I caution you, you may wanna get some Kleenex, especially you, Mr. Hyde, because you might need it. Um, the, the tailors who I don't think were able to join us today um, were the subject of one of our um, uh, first attempts at a documentary type uh, video series um, about their experience dropping off their daughter Juliana uh, last fall. And we thought there was a, not a better way to end this session than to share this video with you. And so I'm gonna let Melissa play this video. It's just under five minutes. Um, I think it's a perfect way to end this session. So I'm gonna let Melissa play and I'm gonna mute myself. So take it away, Melissa. Okay, so this works.
I chose JCU because it was highly recommended and I heard a lot of good things. People previously who were older than me that attended my school said that John Carroll was it, you should check it out. So my dad and I, we went to cook out on the quad, I think that's what it's called, and it was just really fun, very lively, and I just like really liked it. And I remember right when I got to my uncle's house, he was like, well, is that the one you like? And I was like, I think so. And even as I went to different universities to check them out, they didn't stick out like JCU. That's looking like it's going to be an early morning. It's going to be about a three-hour drive. So that being said, we have to leave South Coast, Michigan at 5.30 in the morning. So uh, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of sleeping going on. So I feel like the, the greatest moments about going away to college are that you kind of get to make your own path. The worst part about college is that you're out on your own and you have to make all your own choices. Be okay, making a choice, seeing where it goes. I'm most grateful for a supportive family and friends to be able to push me out the door, get lit up. I'm excited just to get to know new people in a new atmosphere and environment. The school that she's going to, John Carroll, is right along with that line and a uh, good environment for her. And what I mean to do is she is at my place to do well. Those are the basic, really great moments, for sure. You know, there's going to be some bad moments and sad moments. You know, you're going to have to toughen up. It's going to be a good one. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 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 I knew we would have a lot of challenges, but I thought if we could just all be together and be forward, for Juliana and that God has blessed me with a beautiful, loving, smart daughter. All right. Melissa, if you could take yours down. Thank you. Uh, sorry for the audio. Got a little jumpy there. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for sticking with us. I know we ran over. I think it was for excellent reasons that we did. Um, we look forward to welcoming your children to John Carroll in the fall. Um, we will give them all the care and attention that we are giving our current uh, parents' children. Um, and we are here to answer your questions um, and to help you throughout the remainder of this process. Um, and so if you have questions, um, you know to contact your enrollment manager that I hope you've gotten to know over the course of this past year. Um, you certainly can contact um, myself. I know you get emails from me periodically as well. Um, and we will be following up. I know we didn't get to answer all the questions that came through on the chat and I apologize for that, but uh, we will be following up uh, next week um, with all the, the um, questions um, that you had to make sure you get those answers. But thank you again for spending your time today. Um, we look forward again to seeing you uh, in the fall, uh, fingers crossed. Uh, we, we definitely would much rather prefer to see you in the fall on in person um, and give uh, all the bells and whistles uh, to the incoming class of 2024. They definitely deserve it. So thanks again, everybody, for your time. Thank you for our panelists. Uh, I want to give you a high five. We can't give you applause, but I want to give you a high five uh, for all of your time today. And uh, everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, hope to see you soon. So thank you very much, everybody.